Okay, so yesterday we did the patina, and when I woke up this morning, the color was actually much more even than before, and it's um, because the light was different. So that's one thing to note, depending on the environment that you're working on, when you, when you, if you turn something, in the light, you will see that the color kind of changes. Um, now you may not see this in, in the camera or in your camera, but trust me, in real life, it's changing because the light is, is hitting it from a different angle. You're getting reflections from uh, the wall. And most importantly, and most annoyingly, the sun is about to come any moment, so we kind of need to hurry up. Um, but we're not really, what we're doing is we're sealing that color. So that, that patina of, um, and it, when I woke up, the, it was really overcast. Now um, it's sunny, unfortunately. So, um, hold on, I'm just going to put this. So now we need to seal it, and by doing that, we're going to create, uh, I've already done one layer, so it's going to look a little bit more yellow, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to make what's called a dirty yellow, right? So we take our plate. Um, Wow, this piece of wood is not working. Okay, there we go. Um, now we're going to take a little splash of alcohol. Because remember what I said about making this mixture thick? This is 50-50. This is actually a little too thin. Um, so, should be thicker. And the viscosity is something you're going to have to figure out by touch. Um, because it's going to be different. Um, that's thick enough. You want it to be thick enough so you can add alcohol or add color, right? So, in this case, we're taking a tiny splash of alcohol. And because we want it to glow, right? We take our eyedropper. And just one drop of yellow, maybe two, one, two, three, okay. All right. And because we don't want a pineapple, <laughs> um, then we're going to take a little bit of uh, black. Uh, and this is black from Hammerill, um, that you can order it. Black, again, like I said, the yellows are great. The blacks are great. It, it's just Negrosin. You can get Negrosin from Kram, Kramer Pils, uh, Kramer Pilsner. <laughs> Kramer Pilsner. Kramer Pigmenta in, uh, in Germany. Uh, I am. I need more coffee. So we're gonna add one drop of black. Um, I should have probably should have cleaned my dropper because the same thing in perfumery again in varnishing and violin varnishing and perfumery are the same you don't want to um, cross contaminate your colors right I just dipped the yellow eyedropper into the but trust me this black will last you many many years right so then you take the paintbrush out of your hair because you need it <laughs> And you kind of mix it in. So, I don't know if you can see, this is actually a little bit green. But, since we're trying to avoid the orange demon, what do green and red make, right? Brown. Can you hear me? Tom? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I'm... Uh, another thing you should do this w with more coffee, with a lot of coffee and a fresh brain. Um, 
so that's a little bit weak. I want to go a little bit uh, more powerful. So let's let's not cross contaminate our colors and add one, two, three, four drops of yellow. Take a look at that. Um, then you can. Yeah, you can have your microphone on. Like I say, we, we like Diego in this in this how in this workshop. We don't care if he's howling. Uh, then you take a. I'm good. We need to go faster. The sun's about to come. So that's actually green yeah um you want to avoid mixing too many colors but i want a dirty yellow so you can actually just add it to the varnish too like this that might be faster because my varnish is thin so let's do that one two three four I mean, you can do it one at a time. Let's go ahead and add our, our green alcohol, right? Again, I've already done this once and I've sealed it once, but we're gonna do it twice. And I feel confident that we can roll with more yellow. Bam. Clean your eyedropper. And do one, two, three, four, black. And then the way I mix it is I just pour it into here. This is gonna be my jar for dirty yellow. So you can see that's pretty cool. Some of the color has remained. You got black and you got yellow, right? So yeah, you mix it that way. That's a good way to mix it. Now you wanna be careful when you're using Negrosin because it can be a little Depending on where you get it, it can be a little bit sticky, you know? So now, that's pretty well mixed. You'll notice I have a larger brush. Um, I walked to, uh, to see Jose today and returned one of his books that I borrowed. I borrowed a book on loot making, a really great book. And I went and bought a brush and had a, had a talk with him. Every time I go visit Jose Cataria, the great violin maker Jose Cataria, I learn something. Just talking to him, you learn something. I mean, it's incredible. <laughs> uh, I forgot what I learned, but l let's roll. So you see, this is, this is, it's green. It's, I want to go a little bit more yellow. So we're going to roll quickly because... Here comes the sun. Do -do 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 -do. One, two, three, four. You can still varnish with the sun. It's just not a great idea. You just, I'll probably actually close the blind. So there, you got some more yellow. This is a nice sort of yellowishy yellowy green now you don't want to use too much color at this stage that's a nice it's kind of yellowish it's kind of um i'm gonna roll with that because again we're doing many 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 um layers so and here comes the the puta sol <laughs> Wash, wash, look. Okay, yeah, so now I block the sun. Uh, remember in the first video, rule number one close your containers. Close everything. It really, when you open something, the rule is when you're done with it, close it. Even just going from yellow to black because one false move. <laughs> um, Get this out of the way. We don't need it. Anything you don't need, move it. Um, yeah, because uh, we were not filming, but yesterday I forgot to really tighten this. I picked it up too fast, or I can't remember, 
and a bunch of varnish went like, can you imagine if that happened on the instrument? You know, that would not be cool. You'd have to start over. Um, which is also fine. It's completely fine to start over. Um, they say, I don't know who they are. Who, who, is, who are they? You know, them. <laughs> they say that it looks better when you strip and remove. But um, again, we, we've done patina layers and patina layers and we've removed, so. Huh? Oh, the, oh, them. Yeah, them. What's that movie? Um, great movie, Cameron Crowe. Um, um, Almost Famous. Almost Famous is a good one. He's one of my favorite directors. Um, it's set in Louisville. Louisville. The guy's about to commit to... Why can't I remember this? I swear I must have had a stroke. All right, let's roll. Um, so... Listen, let's stop because this is really important. I need to explain. So what you're doing is we are sealing the color. We're sealing this patina and we're adding a dirty yellow. And this is going to give us a ground. You have to be really careful doing this. And I cannot explain to you how to do it. It's basically about how much varnish you have on your brush. If you put too much, it's over. You got to start over. Um, if the varnish is too thin, it will, it will make a mudslide. If it's too thick, it, the var it will drag, the brush will drag, and it will uh, drag the color. So that could happen right now. And then we're screwed. We got to start over. Or we got to retouch. But, so, I am very, very carefully, and I've gotten pretty good at it. You start with a brush that you let the alcohol dry for maybe a few seconds. Then you're just dipping the very, very tip of your brush in, not the whole thing. And you're patting it on the, um, on the paper towel. So boom, boom. And you're just barely scraping it across. Very, very carefully. You're starting at your edge, and you're never doing the same spot twice. Never. You'll have a mudslide. So we move along until we can feel that there's no varnish on our brush, which that's you're going to have to get feel that, and then we roll. So it's almost like that I'm lifting the brush. I'm not actually letting the full weight of the brush hit the instrument, you know? Because I want to avoid making a square-shaped, um, you know, and if you miss a spot, so I have to remember where I did, right? Where I stopped. And you're looking at it this way, that helps you to see where you've been because the surface it's going to be a little bit more shinier on the part that you've touched. Again, the full weight of the brush is not actually touching the instrument even. Just the very tip. It takes a lot of practice to do this. Yeah. And you do the whole thing. So it's easy. The easiest way I found is to start with the edges. Boom, 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 usually around three. And then you meet that part together with another edge, right? So now I'm gonna start sort of here, this way. Start with, I've already done there, same thing here. So, wow, this, the sun is, hey Bronco, Yes. can you do me a favor and close the, um, I cannot stop right now what I'm what doing. What do you need, less light? Yeah, close this one. Okay.
If you can reach back there. Sure. The thing is knowing which one it is. Um, Could it be this? I'll just do the test. Oh, not this one. It's not that one. It's that one. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe both. You, maybe you want the little the little one to the left as well. That's good. Stop. 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 Uh, well, can you open it a little more? Sure. Like that. A little more. Stop. That's good. Good. Whew. Okay. So yeah, again, I'm starting with my edge, and I'm moving on down. And the hardest to do is kind of the middle because you, you know. The danger is that you put a really wet brush right here and you make a square shape. Because the, the liquid of the varnish dissolves the patina that we spent so much time doing. Alright. There we go. I think I forgot. I can't remember. Did I do this? No. So we do that. Again, if I miss like one or two centimeters, that's okay. Because we're gonna do this many, many times. Okay, so now very important is you put your brush back in the alcohol before you start another section, right? So, it's starting to become yellow, but it's gonna be a dirty yellow, not a pineapple, yeah? Uh, and the reason that I've put the brush in here is the varnish will dry in the brush and cause it to drag and cause you to ruin your patina, right? So again, I let my brush dry for a few seconds. And ah, for this, we are going to, for the ribs, actually for this part of the rib, I can lay it here carefully and the same thing tip of the brush careful cat careful cat did I ever tell you the story of um, careful cat hello are you talking to me <laughs> no I'm talking to him oh, I'm sorry <laughs> I could I could not be listening uh, when you do I'm talking to you. Did I ever tell? Well, I'm talking to everyone. Did I ever tell you the story of Careful Cat? I don't know. That was my landlord. Um, bless her soul, who has most certainly left this earth by now. She must have been 90, and she lived upstairs from me in New Orleans uh, in the 1980s. And um, when I first moved in. <laughs> It gets me every time. I'm sorry. <laughs> when I first moved in, I heard just outside, like, careful. <laughs> I told you, Bronco, didn't I? <laughs> this is familiar, yeah. Careful. So I'm like, what the hell? This is like 7 in the morning or something. For sure, I had been out drinking the night before because that's what you do in New Orleans. And um, so I, I'm like, careful. Now you be careful. You know, so I look out the window, squinting, hungover. Uh, again, I want to um, rest my brush in here when I change something. I look out the window and I see her. Talk, and she goes, she's talking to the stray cats that are crossing the street. And she goes, careful cat, careful. <laughs> you know, and she's like, don't cross, don't cross. You know, <laughs> I'm just like. <laughs> but I mean, and then she'd say, cross now, cross now. And, and, and this went on like every, it was every day. Um, so, yeah, you want to be really careful. <laughs> that cracks me up. Careful. Uh, care, careful. It really was like that. Careful. I mean, she had such concern. It was really, you know. Um, yeah, you probably can't see now. Um, let me ch turn the, well, I mean, you don't really need to see, but I've actually got, I've got the instrument just kind of, yeah. How about now? 
Yeah. I've got it sitting on a chair. This is a special varnishing chair that you can sit your instrument and it will not fall. <laughs> um, so yeah, remember just the tip of your brush and careful. <laughs> Yeah, I feel bad because I should have her her um her family. She was also kind of annoying, but because she was really needy and the poor thing was just alone, you know. And I think her family kind of abandoned her. She could also be really mean too. She was, um, you know. But um. Maybe they had a reason. Yeah, yeah, maybe they had a reason, but. Um, you know, I, at first that she'd need a light bulb. I would like, oh, of course I'm changing your light. So I had to change all the light bulbs and, but soon I recognized, you know, if I let this lady get her hooks in too deep, I'm going to be up there every day. Like, um, I mean, I don't mind helping her, you know, and I did help her, but it started to become where she was going to like, you know, take over, you, you know, like. Where have you been? I, you know, I just like, it, you know, I got my own life. I was working three jobs. Um, yeah, poor thing. Anyway, careful. And a lot of people say that now. My, Mikey, uh, Mikey, a violin maker, uh, he also says it. He's like, careful. <laughs> All right, so yeah, this is, um, actually, I'm noticing now that um, I'm able to go pretty aggressively with without being too careful, so um, the sun is now fully destroying my ability to varnish, um, so again, I could feel the varnish drying in the brush, so I put it in the alcohol, and now we're going to roll on the back without, hopefully without the instrument falling over. Um, and this will be a good workout for your arms if you're doing cellos or even if you're doing um, violins because you have to hold it, you know, and the weight, it's actually sometimes I get to the end of this phase and I'm like, oh, I can't hold it anymore. <laughs> Uh, this one is pretty light because it's willow. What are you, what are you guessing? Oh, how much does it weigh? Oh, I have no idea. I should, I should weigh them, actually. It's a, that would be a great thing to make a notebook of how, what a, the total weight of each instrument was. But I think that is another video is weight ratios. You know, the ratio of weight... For, of the it's of the size, wood, and weight. Mm, well, it's how to explain this. Um, I need. I still need to be careful. So, um, it's okay. Let's say that you're gonna make what I call a wiffle ball instrument. You want to make a violin that's really light that has a really thin top, not too thin, so where it's gonna uh, crack. crack, yeah. Um, so you're gonna use light, really light maple. Maple has different weights and densities, you know, or, or look, you wouldn't, you wouldn't use willow for a violin, but you could use poplar, which is lighter than maple. So you have a really light top and you've got a really light back and you're going thin and you say, you know what, I'm going to do a really wiffle bat, I want a wiffle ball instrument, right? <laughs> so then you use, you go light, you do a light tailpiece, you do a very light, um, you do ch pegs out of low altitude uh, cherry, I don't know, you just do everything light. And you know what that instrument is going to sound like? Can you guess? No, it's going to sound like a dog's ass scraping on concrete. <laughs> no, it just, um, 
It may sound good, uh, it may be a rocket, but I think it's quite possible that it will lack a kind of character and depth in the, in the, um, in the... Sure. To, to vibrate, you know, to, to make the material vibrate. Sure. <coughs> yeah. So if it's too thin, I guess there's not enough resistance. And it's just wobbly, you know? It's, it's yeah. Um, the first time I started thinking about this was when I made, okay, I made a cello very similar to this one. Um, but he was even lighter because it was a piccolo. Um, and, and I decided, I decided, you know what? I want to do a pear wood neck. And that, you'd kind of think if you had a willow back and you had pop, I had, I think, um, I'm trying to remember what I used for the ribs. Um... Anyway, pear is heavier than maple, not by a whole lot, but it's enough to make a difference. It's enough that the musician will notice. So um, we're going to stop now with the varnish because the sun is coming. The sun is here. There's, there's no getting around it. Ah, but you can see, actually, this is a good time to... I'll very quickly end the, the, the topic of weight. Of this, this is a whole nother video, I think. Um, when, I, when I installed the neck on, on this cello, and when I set the neck, the next day I, re, I removed the clamps and it was just awake. You know, it was like, <gasps> and I thought, wow, like, the, and normally things change when you, um, you know, when, when you add this much weight to, to an amplifier, right? This is an amplifier, and suddenly you add a stick on top of it, right? That the sound is obviously going to change. You can, be, you can be playing your instrument and put a clothespin on the, on the side of it. Even a tiny bit like that will change the sound. And um, same thing, you, put, you add weight to the bridge, it, boy, it just it makes it completely different. So with this cello, when I um, when I when I removed the clamps and set the neck, it was. Did I almost just screw up? No. Okay. Good. It was um, it was amazing, and that cello was was kick ass. There are videos of it on um, on the website. Um, it's the five string uh, piccolo cello. Yeah, and it has a pear wood, um, pear wood neck. It sound, the, the videos really did not do it justice. Even though that guy did a pretty good job of um, engineering, even because he was just trying to um, make a film, like we were recording, but he was making a documentary on um, um, wood and acoustics and things like that, so. So, yeah, so let's see it in the sunlight, because now we can't, actually cannot work. You cannot work with sun shining in your face. And, you can, well, Bronco, you, for a minute, you're going to have to deal with the sun. Hold on. Don't worry, I'm fine, whatever you do. At this, yeah, it's at this point, my, on my screen looks fine. It's only later on that it's a problem. Yeah, well, this video is over anyway. We just want to... Yeah, I mean, the color is going to be radically different on an overcast day and on a sunny day. So, can you see how sudden now it's yellow, yeah? You, you cannot create your, your colors based upon a false, you know, uh, idea of you want the most neutral, um, what is this? You want the most neutral, sort of true col color to base your layers upon because we're going to do many layers of this. Um, 
uh, when the verdammt, verdammt scheiß Ohrschluch, soul goes, sun goes uh, away. Yes, that is a great idea. They make a they make a lamp um, in Cremona tools, I think, and Jose has that. I need to buy that, but then we'd have to varnish with uh, the blinds drawn, I think. So I've just learned to deal with the um, varnishing on overcast days, and that's pretty easy in Galicia. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, I have an agreement with the gods where I talk to them, um, you know, and they we they, they also we we have disagreements like that I don't get rained upon. Do you know I've never been rained on? Never. Actually, that's not true. Only. Ah, come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have been rained on, but it was only once. And uh, me and Peppa, Peppa has the same theory. She says, why would you, if you carry an umbrella, you're going to get wet. You see? <laughs> so we have an agreement not to. Today, the, um, okay, so yeah, you see it's much, much yellow, but um, you can also see that the willow back is really close to matching um, the rest of it. So I'm all good to go, and I'm really, really happy with where we are right now. So the next phase, which would be tomorrow, would be um, an actual glazing or color treatment where I'm trying to go brown. And um, again, that's what would be tomorrow. And uh, yeah, so uh, now we make our prayer. Por favor, Dios, Dios gallegos, no chovo, no chovo. No, is that correct? No chovo. No, 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 we don't like, yeah, you don't speak Galician, uh, so I will end this with Deixa Falla Espanol. <laughs> <laughs>